Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Mr. E. Thanks a lot for joining us tonight. Thanks for making the time and being here this evening. I must be doing something uh, well over here since you're coming back to learn more. I promise to use your time uh, effectively to share with you my knowledge and experience of the BPO industry and this vocabulary that we have prepared for this uh, lesson this evening. Today's topic is going to be on vocabulary for tracking and logistics. What does that mean? Um, if you ever work for companies like walmart.com, Amazon, or UPS, those type of companies where customers shop online and they receive orders and whatnot. So this these type of industries require support, a lot of support in terms of tracking packages, which is just basically to track a package, right? The term to track a package, right? Is, is simply to trace uh, the location of a package. So um, let's consider an Amazon, an Amazon package, right? So from the origin, which is the warehouse where they they store the 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 products and whatnot from the process of shipping the from shipping the package which is the process in between where it's on it's on a, a truck or maybe it's on an airplane or something the process in between is called in transit right it's still in the delivery process of being delivered right and um to the final destination which is the actual uh let's say the the delivery uh, delivered the status of the package would be delivered or uh we say fulfilled fulfilled means finalized completed uh where the customer receives finally his package in his order. So all of this process in between before the customer, before the item becomes delivered is what we call logistics. Logistics logistics is all of this process of transporting the products and goods from the warehouse, from point A to the final destination, point B, which is the customer. So all of this all of these process, right? All of this process is logistics. And um, in between the process, especially in transit, is the tracking process. So to track a process, a package is to track the stages of the delivery. So sometimes customers might have questions uh, of, about the status of their package and order. And that's where they're going to call you when they're having problems tracking the package by themselves because they can track the package through apps, they can track it on their phones. But if they have questions or concerns, they're going to call customer service, okay? So again, tracking is the process of locating a package in the delivery process, that is to track. And today I'm going to give you vocabulary about uh, dealing with these type of companies. And these companies <clears throat> have a huge representation in call centers, huge. I used to uh, work for Aloric, uh, and I supported uh, Walmart.com, Amazon.com, and also Sam's Club. Uh, com, which is uh, wholesale or bulk sale, where people are not just buying uh, one bottle of uh, of ketchup; they're buying boxes of ketchup. So it's wholesale. So Sam's Club is an exclusive wholesale uh, online store for businesses, right? or small businesses and whatnot. So at this Alorica company that I that I that I worked at, I had to support agents that worked for Walmart.com, uh, chat and email and also voice. For Amazon, it was also voice and chat and email. For Sam's Club, it was only chat and email. So I was assigned a project, different projects to support these accounts and help them with their soft skills, with their empathy, with their assurance of help, and with their English pronunciation, accent, and of course, grammar and all that stuff. So my job was to go directly to these accounts and provide that language support that agents needed, right? Especially agents that don't speak English as a first language. So 
um, I, that was that was part of my experience, and I had the opportunity to understand and to learn all of these logistic processes, and to and to really um, you know get a good understanding of what vocabulary is essential. So what I'm going to share with you is vocabulary that is essential that can be applied for any of these type of accounts. Okay, so that's why you need to learn. Let's uh, let's go to the materials for tonight. Um, so if you guys wouldn't mind, just um, let's explore the materials. Thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, our friends from Colombia that are connecting as well and Guatemala City, of course. Thank you for making the time this evening. Um, I really admire you because you're here learning while other people are just wasting their time doing nothing, but that's great. You guys are here developing yourselves, getting the skills you need for the future. So here, our agenda for today in this class is, well, I already did my introduction. So we're going to cover some words and phrases that are going to be useful at the call center. So we're gonna call them word and phrase of the week. Uh, words and phrases that you can use at the call center. Our main topic is going to be to recognize vocabulary for shipping and delivery. We're going to look at some dialogues and activities. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll keep exploring uh, more vocabulary. We'll do a little bit of speaking and some activities. And also, we'll, 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 we will prepare you on how you can uh, also use this information to prepare you for job interviews. So let's get begin. Let's get started. The objectives for today, uh, at the end of the session, you must be able to recognize vocabulary for shipping and delivering. Also understand phrasal verbs, understand the use of the phrasal verb, uh, drop off and pick up. So there's going to be some grammar, of course. So if we're gonna talk about phrasal verbs, then we need to discuss some grammar, which is awesome. Also practice uh, practice speaking using the vocabulary for shipping and delivery. And of course, practice interview questions. Uh, two interview questions as skills are to describe a team player. The term, are you a team player? And have you ever purchased anything online? Uh, these, are, these are filter questions that I've commonly heard when uh, applying for these type of positions. Um, here's an introduction. In this lesson, we'll focus on our vocabulary for shipping and delivery, which will help you as a CSR. Why do you need to learn this? Because it's a, these are important phrasal verbs, which will also have a lot of uh, practice time for speaking. Okay, so um, Amazon, how does it work? So you can see a picture there of um, of a um, of, of a locker where Amazon deliveries. Are, are shipped to. So this would be a destination, right? Uh, where, where customers can go pick up and drop off their orders, their Amazon orders and receive them and, and whatnot. So th this is an automatic locker that is used at Amazon for these purposes. The questions that you wanna consider for a job interview are, or just a general conversation, have you ever purchased something online? What was it? Have you ever bought something online? Maybe Facebook Marketplace, uh, maybe on Instagram, you bought some shoes, maybe some clothes. Have you ever used Amazon services? For example, Amazon Prime or Amazon.com. Have you ever heard about that? Well, Amazon Prime is, uh, let's say, a premium a service to Amazon. Uh, customers get uh, free shipping, overnight shipping. They get access to Amazon Prime, which is like a, the Amazon's version of Netflix. Um, so you get a lot of extra perks member for the membership. Have you ever exchanged a piece of clothing that didn't fit? So I'm sure that um, you guys are ladies. So you guys, you, when you go shopping for clothes and something is doesn't fit, maybe you get a present and uh, you have to go return it and exchange it. Uh, what is the process? What what happens in that process? What what has the process been like? You know, because people, if you work for Amazon or Walmart, people will call you, say, hey, listen, uh, 
can you change the size or you sent the incorrect size? I want to return it. I want to exchange it. I want to get a refund. So you need to be able to explain that to a customer. D, have you ever received a refund for a service or product you bought? Can you remember the last time that you received a, a refund? Think about that. Because the term refund is something that you're going to be very familiar with if you get to ever get hired uh, for these type of uh, businesses, which is the reimbursement of the funds or returning the money to the customer to its original uh, form of payment. And E, what purchasing apps have you used or know about? You know, uh, apps uh, where you can buy, uh, you know, the things like, uh, you know, pedidos ya here in Guatemala is very common uh, to buy food and others, you know. So what kind of apps have you used for purchasing food or clothes or or items online? So consider that because all of this is going to be relevant to the topic of shipping and delivery. Let's do again our first word of the week. So the term is going to be a team player. A team player is a phrase, is an adjective phrase, which describes somebody that likes to cooperate, that likes to be part of a team, uh, you know, that likes to co like collaborate with others, work with other people. And it's a common term that you can use to describe yourself. You could say, I am a team player. You use a with the article, a team player. So here we have a, a little dialogue. We got the recruiter and the candidate. So you can just imagine uh, that type of scenario. Let's ask the team members to help us. Can you be a team player tonight, guys? Let's see. Everybody, I want you to repeat the phrase so you can actually use it. Everybody say, I can describe myself as a team player. Everybody, can you repeat that? I can describe myself. I can I describe can myself describe as myself a team player. As a team player. Okay? As a team player. That means that you collaborate, you like to work with people, you know? That's a team player. Let's see if... Uh, Let's ask uh, Giselle, can you be the recruiter? And let's ask Karen, is the candidate. Go ahead, guys. How would you best describe yourself? I can describe myself as responsible, hardworking, and a team player. Oh, really? Excellent. How's a team player? I'm the type of person who can work well as a member of a team. I like to actively contribute to the group in order to complete tasks. I'm also a team player because I like to share responsibility with my co coworkers. It's a team effort always. Good. I like that. Very good, guys. <clears throat> so... A team player is somebody that likes to work with others. Um, and you can use it. So let's take away the phrase. One more time, guys. I can describe myself as a team player. One more time, guys. I can describe myself, I myself as a team as a player. Yeah, as a team player. Somebody that likes to work with others. You can use this for a job interview. Next is the phrase of the week that you can use at a call center or with working with customers. The phrase is, thank you for your feedback. Can you repeat it, please? Thank you for your feedback. Thank you for your feedback. That's correct. So thank you for your feedback. Yes, feedback is just another nice word for criticism. You understand? Feedback is a nice word for criticism, somebody's opinion about something. You understand? Um, and feedback, You how do you get feedback? You get feedback from a survey. The customer, the company collects feedback from surveys. You understand? So the customer is going to judge or critique 
your service by giving you a score from one to five, depending on what the metric is. So that's how the, the customer will give you feedback. You understand? And when you're talking to a customer or when you're talking to a supervisor, it's very important to always thank them for the feedback. So if somebody's saying, uh, listen, I think you guys should uh, improve the package or the service. Oh, thank you. Thank you for your feedback. That's great. We appreciate it. Or if your supervisor or your QA says, look, I need you to do this this way because it's going to help you. Oh, thanks for your feedback. That's really great. You know, so the idea is to receive feedback or to take feedback like a profession. So take feedback, right? Like a profession. You understand? All the professionals that I have worked with in my career are very aware that feedback is the only opportunity where you grow. If, if you don't receive feedback, right, then you don't know uh, if you are doing things correctly or if you need to improve. You understand? So feedback is going to help you improve. And you have to have an open mind, an open mentality to receiving feedback. In my experience, giving feedback to adults, some people don't take it professionally and they get angry, they get uncomfortable, they change their attitudes and they have a tantrum. Uh, tantrum, you know what tantrum means? Tantrum means berrinche. So the negative attitude of not receiving or accepting feedback is to have a tantrum, un berrinche, you know? Uh, people, uh, they take it personal, you know, or they get, you know, they, they they feel angry about it. That's the opposite. And that's the opposite from being a profession. So as a professional, you, you should always thank the customer, thank your, your bosses or the people and think about, you know, this person is taking their time to tell me something that I can improve, you know? So you should always see it like that. And if you see feedback like that, you will grow as a person, as a professional in your career and in your personal life, because we all need feedback. Do you understand? All right. So the phrase is, thank you for your feedback. Don't take it personal. Here, let's do an example of a customer and the rep. So let's have Giselle do the, the customer again. And let's ask Karen to help us with the rep, representative part. Go ahead, guys. Sure. There is a problem with your website is too slow and the information is hard to read. Thank you so much for your feedback. I do appreciate that. I will make sure to make a note of this. All right. I don't mean to be picky, but it's the truth. I do understand and I appreciate customers who take the time to give us feedback. It really helps us improve our service. Nice. Good job. Good job. Good job. I have no feedback for your pronunciation, guys. I like your pronunciation. All right. So when how do you use feedback? You use feedback with a verb give. Okay? So the customer gives, your supervisor gives. And you receive the feedback or you take the feedback. Do you understand? Got it? So let's say it, guys. Give feed. I give feedback. Everybody say, I give feedback. I give feedback. Good. I receive feedback. I receive feedback. I take feedback. I take feedback. Now, everybody, let's say, I can take feedback. Say it. I can take feedback. I can take feedback. I can take feedback. Can take That's feedback. right. So if you combine I'm a team player with I can take feedback, you can use it to describe yourself. You can say, ah, oh, yeah, I'm responsible. I consider myself to be a team player and I can take feedback. I have no problem with feedback. You understand? So just giving you some ideas for your job interviews and to talk. Okay, we're going to take a look at that later, but now let's uh, begin talking about the vocabulary for tonight. We're going to talk about 
the the phrase sign in sign in the app the the verb sign in uh, when we sign in that means that we access we we have uh, we log in into into something so we sign in the app that is we we put in our email or password so that is to sign in uh, for example like sign in sign in the into the Amazon app so um, just for pronunciation if I can give you some tips for this verb this is a good verb to sign in is to register to log in to put your credentials in so to sign the verb sign s i g n don't confuse it with sing this is the verb to sing here it's going to be sign this is going to be a diphthong so you'll pr pronounce it like this sign the letter g is not pronounced everybody can you say that please sign sign Signed. that's right Signed. so sign is the action of making a signature you know a signature is your personal your personal mark. So a signature is your personal mark. Signature. Can you say that word, please? Signature. Signature. So let's say if your name is Henry Lopez, then your signature is going to be this. <laughs> That's my signature. Do you understand? This is my signature you understand my personal personalized mark and the action is to sign right uh can you sign the contract please sign the contract it's for your new job Ten thousand quetzales oh yeah Giselle. oh where do i sign <laughs> you know what i'm saying where do i put my mark on it you know so that is to sign. Everybody got it? Got it? Got it. Got it. Okay. And you sign in the idea of to sign in. So you're going to connect it with a preposition. Sign in. Like this. Sign in. Can you say it? Sign in. Sign in. Sign in. Sign in. Say it. Sign in. Sign in. That's right. So that is to sign in your email, sign in the app. So here's an example. I want to ask the team to, to help me. Let's see. Jenny, are you available? Brenda, are you there? Yes, coach. I'm here. Okay, Brenda. Brenda, could you read the customer part and Jenny the representative part? Thank you, guys. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry, Coach. Could you repeat, please? Yeah, sure. You're the customer. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, right. thank you. Sure. Okay. Um, I can sign signing to the app. Can you help me receive my password? I'm sorry to hear that. Sir, I can definitely help you to reset your password. Thank you. I need to say, sign in to make a purchase. I completely understand. And I, I'm glad to hear you want to make a purchase with us. May I please have your mail address attached to your account? in order to receive the password? Excellent, excellent. That's all call center vocabulary. <laughs> all of that is call center vocabulary, guys. Hello, Leonidas from Nicaragua. Welcome, my friend. Good to have you. Okay. Hello, so, coach. Hi, welcome, Leonidas. Good evening, good evening, good coach. Evening. Good evening, welcome. guys. Good evening. So, good evening. Good evening. So, some keywords. I'm going to give you pronunciation, guys. Can I give you some pronunciation tips? Can I teach? Can I teach? Yeah? 
Can yes. I? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Okay. So purchase. Let me give you some feedback. Purchase is going to be pronounced like this. Per. Chess. Everybody say purchase. 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 To purchase is to buy. So as a verb, it's like saying buy. And you make a purchase. So you when you say, for instance, you say, I purchased in the past tense, it's a regular verb, purchased. I purchased a sweater online. That means I bought. I bought a sweater. It's just another way of saying buy. Do you understand? And we can use purchase as a noun when you say a purchase. When you put the article, it's a noun. And it's like saying, I made a purchase. I made a purchase. It's like saying, hice una compra. I made a purchase. Okay? So you can use this one. Write it down because you're going to use it a lot as a verb and as a noun. Everybody, let's say it. I purchased a sweater. I purchased, I purchased a, sweater. a sweater. I made a purchase. I made a purchase. Good job. Now, this is also going to be important. Trust me, I have many years working in this industry. And this is vocabulary that's used all the time. So sometimes customers will call you and They'll tell you, I can't sign in. I can't sign in, right? I, I cannot log in. I can't sign in. That means what I it's asking me to reset the password. So you're going to, in your system, you're going to do some steps and you're going to reset the password for the customer. You're going to send them a new link or something. So the pronunciation is um, reset so you're going to pronounce it like this. Let me give you some feedback. You're going to say re set. So the accent is in set. Can you guys say that, please? Reset. Reset. That's correct. Set. Beautiful. Reset the password. Say it, guys. Reset, reset the password. Reset the reset. password. Reset. Yes. Jenny, can you say it, please? Reset the password. Reset the password. Good. And you're going to say, allow me, write this one down, because this is going to help you. Allow me means, permítame. Allow me, write it down, to reset the password. Bear with me a moment. I need to work on my system. Okay? Let's see it, guys. Allow me to reset the password. Go ahead. Allow me, Allow me to reset the password. Excellent. Write it down. You're going to need it. This is a good phrase. Allow me to work on my system. Allow me to send you uh, the package. Allow me to work on the refund. Allow me, allow me, allow me. Okay? Got it? It is the Thanks. same thing. It is the same thing as saying, let me. Do you understand? So, let me is, means, déjeme. Déjeme resetearlo. Do you understand? What is the difference? This is more formal. Allow is more formal. So, if you work with fancy customers who rent very expensive cars... You're going to say, allow me. You understand? For example, a loyalty <laughs> team. <laughs> if you work with very fancy customers, right? <laughs> loyalty team, coach. Yeah, I'm just being a team player, Giselle. That's all. Okay? I'm yeah. a team player. Well, let me is more informal. Informal. Yes, sir. Okay, I'm taking my time. Is that okay? Can I take my time teaching? Can I take my time? Yeah, I'm yes. going to take my time. I'm going to take my time. So you learn it, right? Okay, let's go to the next one. So everybody got sign in, I'm sure. Now let's go to the next one, which is browse the website. Browse means to navigate uh, some kind of system, you know, a website, browse the system. 
whatnot. So, Mr. Customer, uh, can uh, you, Mr. Customer, you can browse the website and search for the item you want to purchase. Sure, I'll keep browsing. If you provide me the name of the item you're looking for, I'll be happy to help you find it. And that's another real scenario. So, a uh, couple of words here. I'm going to take my time. I'm going to take my time because I know, I know that this is important. If it wasn't important, I would just go like, okay, let's just look at it quickly and forget about it. And that's not how it works. So here, the, the verb is to browse. Okay? Browse means to navigate a system. Okay? Browse. So what do you browse? You browse the website. Right? You, you browse the system. Right? Uh, you browse... Uh, a book, which is to search, to navigate, to quickly look at something. You understand? The correct way of pronouncing the verb is with a diphthong. A, uh, u, and this is going to sound like a z sound. Browse. Everybody? Let's say it. Browse. 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 Right. Now let's say browse the website. Browse the website. Browse the system. Browse. So how do you say permítame? Allow me. Allow, allow me. me to say it. Allow me to browse. Allow me to browse the system. That's correct. Browse the system. That's right. Like navigate, you know, operate, whatever it is, all the steps that you need to do. You got it? Got yeah, it? Go. Okay, good. Uh, okay, here's another one that you need to learn how to pronounce. And with this, we're going to close the first part. Like I said, today is a pronunciation uh, vocabulary class. Uh, the next word is very important. It's, it's item. Item. An item is a product. You understand? It could be anything. Uh, a pair of shoes, a jacket, a computer, a bed, a sofa. So it's an item. And in the plural, items. It's a count noun. It should be pronounced like this. I rem. So diphthong and flap T. Rem. Rem. I rem. Can you say it, guys? Item. 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 So, Good. So we don't say item. We say item, which is a product. You understand? Got it? Okay. So you're going to say, allow me to, to, allow me to refund the item. Everybody, allow me to, allow me to refund the refund. item. The item. Allow the item. Item. That's correct. Are we good? Yeah? Okay. Okay, we got a lot more to learn in this vocabulary lesson for tracking. We're going to, up next, we're going to talk about make purchases, how to use that, issue a refund, also all of that vocabulary that you need. And also after that, we're going to talk about drop off how to use drop off and pick up um, correctly. So let's take a little break and we'll be back with more, okay? 10 minutes, please. Thank you. <laughs> 